da nossa alma. Sabemos que Jesus em breve voltará. The great desire of our soul is to wait for Jesus to return. That's how we are able to survive in this world so cruel. I greet the beloved church and those who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to stand up in reverence to the word of the Lord, of which we're going to read in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 3. Nehemiah chapter 3. We're going to read three verses. Nehemiah verse 10, 10, 23, and the verse 28. Thus says the word of the Lord. Nehemiah 3, 10. Next to them, Jediah, the son of Hermath, made re repairs in front of his house, and next to his, him, Hattush, the son of Hashabnia, made repairs. Now, verse 23. After him, Benjamin and Hashub made repair opposite their house. After then, Azariah, the son of Messiah, the son of Anavi may repair by his house. Now verse 28. Beyond the house gate to priests may repair each in front of his own house. Lord God, we glorify for the experience that we can have with you throughout this moment of praise. And now as we are going to meditate in your word, we ask Lord that uh, clarify our minds, bring us to the light of revelation to what you desire to make us experience and know so that we may love you more and know you better. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. The book of Ezra and Nehemiah, they are books if looked through human eyes and reason, they are historical books, so they speak of the restoration of the walls around the city of Jerusalem and the gates of the temple and of the city. And we think, we we'll keep thinking, why this restoration what take pla took place, what is the importance of this restoration? And that caused the Holy Spirit to inspire at least two books, extensive books, so that we would meditate and every time we read them, we would find this, find out something important for our daily lives today in the 21st century. Just to remind you, we see the experience of a man that had been taken captive, Nehemiah, He was like a war trophy. Many youth were taken, especially the healthy, good-looking and intelligent youth. And Nehemiah even had a profession that at the same time was privileged and honorable and also dangerous, risky. He was a cup holder. The one, cup holder is the one, cup bearer is the one who tastes the, the food before the king so that if there is an attempt of uh, poisoning the king, that person would die so that the king would not die. So this man, away from his land, away from his nation, he never forgot about his land. He prayed. He, as well as other, there were mentions in the word, Daniel, Misael, Azariah, Ananias, they all did that. Distant, captive, Humanly speaking, they were humili humiliated, but they never forgot their, their, their origins. 
And that causes us to remember the text of the word that says the following. And Isaiah says, You that escape from the sword, run away. Run away to save your lives. And go up to Jerusalem. May Jerusalem go up to your heart. Don't forget this. If I uh, made a quote that is not correct, just correct me. The city of Jer Jerusalem is to this day like uh, God's uh, apple, apple of God's eye. Those who do not have an, uh, a spiritual understanding that we have, those who are called the, called the enemies of Jerusalem, they look to Jerusalem as because they want to have Jerusalem as a trophy, a war trophy. They don't have any idea that there is the base of all things, because Jer Jerusalem prophetically points out to our eternal city for which we are going to go and on which we are going to live as we just sang come Lord come Lord quickly he's going to come to take us and to bring us to this place that we call heavenly Jerusalem and that's why Nehemiah that could have been easily say I've been taken captive I'm in, in my own profession. I'm comfortable, apparently. I have a good life. I'll forget my own culture. I'll forget my people. I'll forget my, my population and my holy city. But he never did that. He never forgot. He always prayed and always wanted to uh, have news about the city. And when there were news, to him that this city was destroyed and the, the gates had been uh, set on fire and his face got long and the king that had great intimacy with him he was like a, a shadow of the king the king noticed and he asked him, why is your face so sad and he said because my city is destroyed and the gates have been burnt on fire everything is in, in ruins and my heart uh, is heavier because of this and the Lord allowed him to find grace on the king and the king says, king says go to this place I'm going to give you resources and letters of authorization so that you can go and bring a group of people with you to rebuild those those walls can you imagine the joy of this servant of the king being able to receive all the resources all the subsidies necessary to see his holy city rebuilt and restored. But don't think, my brethren, that it was easy. The trajectory was difficult. The distance was, distance was great. And because of the belongings that were carried, it was arduous. And as he arrived there, he found something that he never imagined he was going to find. He found many oppositors three of them very famous Tobias one of them Sambalat another opponent and the third was called Jessen and those men spiritually speaking they typify the trilogy of evil and today in the 21st century they also operate against us the world with their uh, uh, worldly offerings, trying to bring into our houses the uh, um, dirty and impure habits, the flesh that is not dependent on the world, and something that is inside of us is difficult to control, and one of the most ferocious enemies, most voracious enemies that we have, one of them is the flesh. And for last, even the enemy, the enemy himself, the devil himself, that managed these other two. And those oppositors began to try to convince Nehemiah, Ezra, and the remainder were with them, the committee, convincing, the, tried to convince them not to do this. And the arguments were even plausible, humanly speaking. The city is already destroyed. The gates have been burnt. The temple is in ruins. Leave this city behind. There are so many other things for us to do. Let's do other things. And the offerings were many. Constantly they received offerings. Come here, let us celebrate this. Let us sing and rejoice in a um, 
fleeting joy, artificial joy. And those three are trying to do everything to try to deviate the servants from the objective of taking care of this, the walls and the gates and the temple. A blessed be the name of the Lord, because not Nehemiah or nor Ezra and his uh, entourage never allowed themselves to be carried away by those arguments from the evil. The arguments from Tobias Zambalab just saying were not compared to what was in their hearts, and they were victorious. They were faithful in their purpose. And most importantly, because of this faithfulness, because of this determination, the Lord honored them in every moment of their lives. And the Bible says that they did their job with so much joy. With one hand, they have the tool of work, and with their other hand, they had the weapons. So this would have been already an excuse or either construct or a protect. So isn't it logical? They could have said, Nehemiah, do you want us to do the two things? You want to, us to construct and to be vigilant? But exactly this was the revelation of their victory. In the same way as it is ours. The Lord has shown to us that we need to understand the purpose of this. Today, in the 21st century, could have said oh, one thing or the other, or I either work or earn my livelihood, or, or I take care of the church, or I either go to school or dedicate to my college or to my course or my specialization or my post-graduation or doctorship, or I take care of the things of the church. This is possible to human eyes, right? Completely normal. I could even use the argument, I cannot do two things at the same time. But biblically speaking and spiritually speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling us the same one they said to the, um, the man that restored the temple. Yes, reconstruct, restore, and protect. But there was something that was primordial amongst them. There was a communication. There was an interaction. There was a fellowship. There was a unique they were able to restore, not to hear the invi invitations and attempts of discouragement. And there was an instruction that was very interesting that is valid for us today. Be careful. Be vigilant. Pay attention. Be near the waters. Do not be away from the waters. Water speaks of the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you have thirst, just go run there and quench your thirst. If you need a refreshing, the heat of the trial is very great. Go to the waters and catch a refreshing. If you uh, and there was a slip up, you said in the Holy Spirit, go to the waters and purify yourself, clean up, and being near the waters is very important. And Nehemiah, Ezra, and their friends understood it very well. And there was an instruction of the Lord that was related to them. In the moment, in when we truly hear the sound of the trumpet, you will gather. So whenever something happens, at the slightest sign of danger, we're going to sound the trumpet. The alarm will be given. And when you hear the sound, gather up. Because in gathering, there will be security. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother and sister, we are rebuilding the, the walls every day of our lives. We are rebuilding the gates every day of our lives. The temple is being restored every day of our lives. The Bible says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it, even in this sense, we need to be paying attention and be rebuilding uh, our, our temple. And the Holy Spirit is always near us. We are near the waters. We are always Quenching our thirst is a service, as is a visitation, is a meeting, is a group of assistants that calls, is a visitation at home, is a visit in the hospital, and even sometimes a gathering, a virtual gathering. A message is sent in the groups, let us pray for this and this topic, and the people gather in order to pray, in order to hold hands and to help out, to be near one to one another, so that the name of the Lord may be glorified. 
the gates that have been burned. So, in other words, the enemy has, at every moment, tried to burn the person of the Lord Jesus in our lives. What Jesus represents for you and I, the enemy of our souls is trying to destroy this, so that we may become vulnerable. But the instruction of the Lord is to restore the gates, so that we may be in security. The walls need to be restored. The walls speak of a limit. We need to understand the limits of the Holy Spirit for our lives. And this limit is not a limit of prohibition. As is that the world, as just saying, Zambalat, Tobias, trying to say and convince us, hey, being a Christian is a prison. You don't leave. Not knowing that the ones who say that, that in truth, in truth the wall is being built and constantly being preserved. It speaks of a li wonderful limit that the Holy Spirit gives us and shows us and says, say, my servant, to this place you can go and you'll be under my protection. And uh, until this place you go, and I'll be with you and no danger will come to your tent. But, uh, until this point you go and you'll be under my wings. And that's how we see the walls. The walls are the limit of security for our souls. But tonight, there's a detail that the Holy Spirit has called our attention to as we were praying for the service. The Lord has shown the necessity or necessity to seek a, a, a personal intimacy with Him. So if the brethren observed in the three texts that we read, there is something in common with these three texts. It said that was a need of restoration in front of the house of where they lived. The city were, was great, inhabitants were in great number, and the responsibility of that gap, of that region, or of that rupture that existed in front of my house, it was my responsibility. So I needed to take care of it. It was a matter of spiritual logic. It is in front of my house. Why am I going to wait for Nehemiah, Nehemiah or Ezra to send someone and determine someone and delegate it to someone to fix it? Since if it is in front of my house, our house speaks of our heart. It speaks of our individuality. In the mercy of the Lord, it acts in each one of us, in my life, in your life, and of the brother and the sister, in a very peculiar way, in a very personal way. The Lord takes care of you and me according to our own nature. Blessed be the Lord for this, because a few are more timid and others are more uh, outgoing. Uh, a few are more, uh, more careful and others are more easygoing. And the Lord knows the detail of each one, the sheep of our of flock, and we're, of His flock. And He looks at each one of us and gives us the opportunity to take care of our own house. And this work in front, of the, in front of the house is something that only you and I can do. It is something that no one else can do. My neighbor cannot do. I have a problem in my house. I have a gap in front of my house. I cannot ask my brother, hey, can you fix this gap for me? He'll say, no, I have my own house. I have to take care of my own gap. This is your gap. You restore it. This is an individuality. It does not come from uh, being an egotistic thought, but it is from us to be able to use our own free will and maintain your, the position that pleases the Lord so that the walls and the temple may be in perfect shape so that we may be in good shape so when the trumpet sounds we may gather together and be raptured for the Lord, by the Lord. In the same way, the instruction that was given, when you hear the trumpet, gather up. And one day the, the trumpet will sound and only we hear the sound of the trumpet, whoever knows the sound of the trumpet. We know. We have already known the beloved of our soul. We know his voice, as he said, I am known by my sheep. They know my voice, and I know them. If you entered here tonight, you know very well that from the day we were formed, the first multiplication of cells, he knew already your name, he knew where we was, you were going to live, and how we were going to be when you were adolescent and adult. God knew every detail of your nature, of your personality. And He is with His hands, 
extended to operate and help to restore what needs to be restored. There are two spiritual gifts that were given by the Holy Spirit before the service, and we are going to relay them here. We are going to explore the details here, because they have everything to do with our walk. The Lord has shown a farm, um, a silo filled with uh, hay, together with the grains that was that was put to be stored there, and there was a great multitude that had been called to remove that hay, and this hay was uh, piled up. Every person made their own pile according to their work, and all of, of the hay was uh, burnt up. And the gift speaks of of a man that was afraid to come close because of the fire. He was afraid of the fire. In my brethren, uh, bringing the discernment into the body, holding the weapons and the tools, we have discerned that the, whole, the Lord is conclaiming us for us to take care of our, our own personal spiritual life in front of our house, so inside of our hearts. The, the hay has no worth other to be burnt. So if we have uh, a, a silo, a place filled with grain that is filled with hay, we don't even cannot e are not even able to know how much provision we have stored there. See how the care of the Holy Spirit is it takes care of the smallest details in our lives. He wants us to remove the hay so that we may look, uh, may realize how much uh, how our spiritual life is. I need to have a better inventory of, our, of food. Hey, speaks of the winds of doctrine. It speaks of the voices that we hear. It's the world with their tendencies and their cultures trying to influence us. There is there an attack from evil against the servants and the Christians in Jesus. That is the following. If you cannot bring the, the youth to the church, bring a little bit of the world inside of the church. Can you imagine the danger? We're going to do things that attract the youth. We see out there crazy things being done falsely in the name of Jesus to attack the youth. But bless me, in the name of the Lord, because we don't need this. Because inside of our houses, inside of our church, inside of the place where the Lord has us a home, there is plenty of bread, there is plenty of grain, there is green pastures, there is there are calm waters, and they are being taken care of and raised in, on the path of the Lord. And when they become adults, they will know the path that they need to follow in order to inherit, inherit the heavenly Jerusalem. Don't be afraid of this fire. But this fire, this vision is the presence of the Holy Spirit that comes and burns everything that should not be in our midst, should not be in our minds. It warms up our hearts and brings life, brings comfort and purifies in the same way as silver that is purified on fire does uh, in the same way are the service of the Lord as the Holy Spirit visit us. And the other gift it shows a house or two levels, two floors, and the terrace, or terrace uh, they build a parapet so that the children could play on the terrace and not fall from the terrace. So the Holy Spirit take care of of our families, especially the children. We had a month of June praying for the families. It was a great blessing. The visits, we heard the voice of the Lord, the advices, and may it not be ever forgotten, and that we may continue building the walls and repairing the walls. My brethren, the book of Nehemiah, and the book of Ezra, if we could summarize with just one word, the one word that we would use, sanctification. Sanctification. The word sanctification means setting aside. What does what does the world the, the wall does? It separates. It shows where the city is and uh, what is outside of the city. So the Holy Spirit is calling us to sanctify ourselves. Whoever is sanct sanctify himself more. Who is clean clean themselves up more and more. That's the invitation of the Holy Spirit. Even the circumstances may not collaborate. Even if you may be going through trials. Even if the invitations are many. Say, say Zabalat and Tobias may be bothering you. Restore the walls. Restore the gates. Be holy because the Lord is holy. Is the word of the Lord for us tonight. 
May this word and this gift may do good things for us and strengthen us. Put a powder pit around the terrace of your house. Be vigilant to your children. Let you be in the Lord. easy. There are many and many difficulties. The path, the transportation of everything that was necessary, and as they got there, the position, the persecution. The Lord Jesus also has not deceived us. He didn't say it was going to be easy. The word says, in the world we have afflictions, but do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of the world, because I overcome the world. Bless be the Lord. And the victory of which he was speaking was concluded in the cross of Calvary when he said, Father, in your hand I give my spirit. Everything is finished. So he finished the project of sanctification, the restoration of the walls and the gates. There he taught us and gave us all the resources that you and I need in order for the city to be restored. And in front of my house, in your house, there may be a gap, and our eyes may be open to hear the sound of the trumpet and hear it and depart with the Lord eternally. Use the means of grace, use the fasting, the early dawns, read the word, pray with your family and your children in love. Give the experience of the church as a family. That's what happened with them at that time. They lived a wonderful fellowship for the glory of the Lord. And those are resources of the Lord for you and I may be victorious 
and soon may enter in the glory of the Lord to live eternally in the heavenly Jerusalem. That's the your name, Lord. Lord God, we praise you. Because in the same way that as Nehemiah, Ezra, and his friends, they face that trilogy of evil, today we face as well the same opposition. But at the same time, we have the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that help us in our daily lives. And Lord, we have the bread, we have the fire, we have the water that refresh our soul. We have, Lord, every resource that comes from eternity to keep us standing while we're waiting for the day which will be raptured to be with you eternally. Lord, bless it, each family and the housing you represented so that we may be able to fix the gaps in front of our houses, bless our terraces so that they may, may be protected so that our children may know the way of the Lord. I pray us and prepare us, Lord, to meet with you in the clouds Take us home in peace, but never out of your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. We have come to the end of yet another service of praise to the Lord, of meditation, and of his presence. And whoever needs an assistant, a prayer, uh, you remain where you are. In whatever moment, you understand that you felt that the Lord spoke with you. Lord, I woke it in you. That the Lord wants to speak personally with us, so share it with us. Allow us to pray with you. We're going to go towards you. We're going to glorify the name of the Lord because you are sensitive to the word of the Lord. I'm going to ask the Lord to confirm his blessing upon your life and to all the peace of the Lord. Our next service is going to be on Thursday at 8 o'clock at night. This week we are going to early dawn for the, our co works. The, the topics of the prayers are on the back. And to all, peace of the Lord.